must go to stand in for the shamed for the cause of his great name we must go we must go to go befriend the lost carriers of peace at all costs we must go to every corner
Hello and welcome to our online worship experience here at Satterbeck Berlin. My name is Tony and I'm the pastor here. And my name is Jessica and I'm the Saddleback Kids Director. We are so excited to be offering Saddleback Kids back in person here at our Berlin campus for early childhood age three through first grade and elementary school age kids from second grade through sixth grade. We could not be more thrilled to offer this kids church experience back live in person for the kids to grow and learn about Jesus and to connect with God and with other kids. Space is limited here at our location, so please go on our website, on our visit page, to register your kids for each Sunday. You can also find a lot of great resources on our website under kids to check out videos from our Heyo Jesus Bible stories to worship songs that are translated into German for you, and they're in English and Spanish as well. We also love kids, and if you love kids too, and maybe you don't want to serve directly in the classroom, but there are many serving opportunities, we'd love to talk more to you about Saddleback Kids. If you have any questions, please reach out to me through kids at saddleback.de and I'd love to connect with you further. I want to welcome you today to our online worship experience here at Saddleback Berlin. Um, and I don't know if you watch on our website right now or on YouTube. If you watch on YouTube, there are a couple of links in the video description that I ask you to check out. If you are watching on our website, I like to talk about some features that you can see in our watch experience. First of all, there is a notes button. For every sermon, we offer you uh, a section where you can put down some notes. There are the main Bible verses of the sermon and you can use the save button to save all of your notes as a PDF on your computer. There is also a connect button on our watch experience and I encourage you to check it out either right now or after the sermon because this is our online connection card and you can use it to just say hello and just mention that you were there. You can give us feedback on what you like and what you didn't like on our service. You can indicate that you like to talk to a leader of our church or you want to find out more. You can um, send prayer requests or ask any question you like. And you can also look for a small group. So click on connect and we would love to hear from you. We also have a gift button on our watch experience. And so if you feel part of our church, you can use the gift button to donate online. You can use PayPal or you can uh, just copy and paste the IBAN, our bank account details in there as well. If you are a first time visitor, if you're just a guest, please don't feel obligated to give. This is just for people who feel part of our church. There is also a share button in our watch experience. So if you like the sermon that you're about to hear and you think more people should hear it and maybe you have some specific people in mind, use the share button to, to forward this to anyone you like to um, forward it to. There are other things on our website that you can discover as well. There is an About Us page that talks about our story, about our values and about our church in general. You can also click on find a small group under connect um, and look for a small group in your area. Or you can check out our event calendar to see upcoming events to be part uh, of that as well. And so we would love to hear from you. And now we hope you enjoy our online service. And if you want to be here in person next week, check out the information on our visit subpage. It's never too early to sing some Christmas songs, so why don't you join us wherever you are? Sing joy to the world. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him through, and heaven and nature sing. Yeah. Hey.
Welcome here at Saddleback Berlin at our online worship service. My name is Tony and I'm the pastor here. And I am so glad that you're joining us today on Advent 2nd. I especially want to welcome you. If you're here for the very first time, we're so glad that you're here. And now sit back, relax and enjoy the service. Did you know that the Bible says that whenever we sing songs of worship, it will renew our strengths and it will restore our joy. So it doesn't matter how good of a singer you are. Join us in worshiping today with this amazing Christmas songs from Celebrate Worship from California. Ooh, 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 ooh. Did you know that your baby boy will one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has 
has come to make you new This child that you've delivered Will soon deliver you Mary, did you know That your baby boy Could give sight to a blind man Mary, did you know That your baby boy Could calm a storm with his hands did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? And when you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face oh, of God. Mary, did you know? The dead will live again. Dead will live again. The lame will leave. The dumb will speak. The praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby one day rule the nation Did you know That your baby boy Is heaven's perfect lamb This sleeping child you're holding Is a great I
the night went to the little lamb Do you see what I see Way up in the sky Little lamb Do you see what I see A star, a star Dancing in the night With a tail as big as a kite With a tail as big as a kite Send the little lamb to the shepherd boy Do you hear what I hear Ringing through the sky Shepherd boy, do you hear what I hear? A song, a song, high above the tree with a voice as big as the sea, with a voice as big as the sea. This is Pastor Tony again, and I want to be honest with you, I love Christmas time in Berlin. Usually winter in Berlin is a, is a really difficult time. It's grey and it's cold, people are not very happy and grumbling and so on, but when it's Christmas and you have all the Christmas markets outside, you have the smell of Christmas and the, the Christmas lights everywhere, it's just beautiful. I love Christmas in Berlin. And I love to sing Christmas carols because they remind us of what Christmas is all about. That Christmas is not about material presents. Christmas is not about Santa Claus. Christmas is about Jesus and the birth of our Savior and what Jesus accomplished on earth. And how he restored peace in so many areas of our lives. And so this will actually be our Christmas series for this year called The Missing Peace. And I will talk about that later 
in this service because that series will start next week. Today, we have a very different kind of uh, message for you. It's, uh, we have an Accelerate Vision service. Now, some of you, even if you, if you are at Centerback for a very long time, you have no idea what that means. So let me quickly introduce that to you. Um, at the end of every year, we have a special offering here at Setterback that's called a Thanksgiving offering, a Christmas offering, an end of the year offering. And this year we're bringing all of these offerings together and we call it an Accelerate offering. Because we ask ourselves, hey, God gives us a vision for our global church. And what can we do to accelerate God's vision, to move more quickly? faster in that direction of what God's vision is for us. And so Pastor Andy will share with you today a global vision for the next year and five key initiatives that our global church will focus on in the next year. And some of these key initiatives will have an effect on Berlin as well. And I will talk about that after his message. But for now, I want to ask you to sit back, relax and enjoy the vision that our senior pastor gives to us, to our global church family, and what God has in store for us next year and how you can contribute to that. So let's dive into Pastor Andy's message. Hey everybody, welcome to Saddleback Church. We're so thrilled that you're here with us this weekend. I wanna say welcome to all of you who are joining us online, those of you at all 18 of our physical campuses, and those of you at our dozens of extension sites all over the world, you've picked a great weekend to be in church. I love this weekend. Uh, I love this weekend for multiple reasons. Now, here in the United States of America, this is Thanksgiving weekend. And for me personally, this is my favorite holiday of the year. Now, I love Christmas. I love to celebrate the birth of Jesus. But sometimes Christmas can be so busy. We're spending lots of money on presents. And even sometimes when we do all that, people aren't happy, and that's really not a good thing. So Thanksgiving, it seems, at least in my family, uh, people are, are a whole lot more happy. Uh, something about slowing down to thank God for His goodness brings joy to our hearts. And on this Thanksgiving weekend, I want you to know how grateful I am for you. Uh, this has been one full year, lots of transition, lots of things in our personal lives, and for us as a church that, that God has been doing uh, and as I reflect on the faithfulness of God to our church, the faithfulness of God to my family, at the top of the list of things that I'm grateful for is you. I love your passion for Jesus. I love your kindness and love for those around you. And my heart is so incredibly grateful for Saddleback Church. I know God has a great plan for our church as we look forward into the future, and God has a great plan for your life. So this season right now for us as a church is a season of gratitude. It's a time for us to look back at all that God's done. And it's a season of anticipation for us to look ahead into the future with God's future vision for our church. Now we've put this all together in one banner or one brand called the Accelerate Offering. So this season right now between now and the end of the year is a season where we're saying, what does it mean for us to step into the fullness of God's vision for our lives collectively? And what does it mean for you to step into God's vision for your life? So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about this Accelerate initiative and we're gonna look at God's vision for our lives together. I wanna share with you five of the big initiatives that we believe that God is leading us to step into as a church and how you can be a part of that. But I wanna start with this idea of acceleration. Now, some of us, when we hear the word accelerate, it intimidates us. Like there are some personalities similar to mine that when you go to the grocery store, like you're constantly eyeing for the shortest line or maybe sometimes when you're in traffic, you're looking for the fastest lane to go down. And some of us are just a little bit messed up like that. Like we're always looking for speed. Uh, now, sometimes that desire for speed is God given. He wants us to move fast. And sometimes God wants us to slow down. I've learned in my journey that there are some times where God is saying go, and there are other times where God is saying slow. And I've also seen in my life personally, and as a part of even just being in a church, you see that there are some people that it's easier to go, and some people it's easier to slow. Some of us have a hard time going, 
some of us have a hard time slowing. And the discernment process in our journey spiritually is where is God saying go and where is God saying slow? And sometimes he's saying go and slow at the same time. He's saying go in some areas of your life and he's saying slow in other areas of your life. Now, the goal with all of this is to go God's speed with the different areas of your life. It reminds me of a time in the Old Testament with the nation of Israel, where they had been wandering in a desert for 40 years. And right before they're about to move into the promised land, there are a few words in Deuteronomy chapter 1 that are very significant. I want you to hear these words. Uh, these are the words that Moses spoke to all the people of Israel while they were in the wilderness east of the Jordan River. They were camped in the Jordan River near Suf, between Paran on one side, Tefel, Laban, Hazaroth, and Dizaba on the other. That's some cool names right there. Uh, it says, normally it only takes 11 days to travel from Mount Sinai to K Kadesh Barnea, going by way of Mount Seir. Now I want you to hear this for a second. So the Israelites have been on a journey that has taken them 40 years. And the scriptures are highlighting that this journey should have taken them 11 days. In fact, it says, but for 40 years, or but 40 years after the Israelites left Egypt, on the first day of the 11th month, Moses addressed the people of Israel, telling them everything the Lord had commanded him to say. Now think about this for a second. The Israelites are about to go into the promised land after 40 years in the wilderness. This journey should have taken 11 days. Now, if you had the choice between 11 days and 40 years, what would you choose? I know you would choose 11 days. Nobody wants to spend 40 years wandering when God wants us to go through something in 11 days. And there are times in your life where God intends for you to move so much faster through something than what you go. Sometimes our growth spiritually gets delayed, not because of God's capacity or God's speed, but because of our response to God. And the goal for us is not to go faster than 11 days or faster than God. The goal is for us to go with God at God's speed. So there are two big ideas, and we're going to frame around this in particular for your life personally. Uh, God's vision for my life is this. It's delayed through disobedience and fear. The Israelites spent 40 years in the wilderness because of disobedience and fear. Now, I don't have time today to go into all of this, and this would be a great message at some point to spend more time on. But sometimes in our lives, when God is prompting us to move, or God is telling us to go, when we disobey, we end up delaying God's destiny for our lives. You might say it like this, days of disbelief lead to decades of delayed destiny. That's really good. Let me say it one more time. You might even want to write this down. Days of disbelief lead to decades of delayed destiny. And we don't want that. We don't want that for our lives individually, and we don't want that for our church. We wanna move at God's speed. So how do we go at God's speed? Well, we go at God's speed or accelerated vision. God's vision for my life is accelerated through obedience and faith. So God gives vision for our lives. God gives vision for your life. And that vision comes to fruition as we obey and we trust him. It's accelerated through our trust in his leadership in our lives. And so today what I wanna do with the message is I wanna share with you five big initiatives that we believe God is leading us as a church to step into. Now, I wanna remind you on my first weekend when I gave my first message as your pastor, uh, I laid out a 25 year vision for our church. And it's good for us to recognize that a 25-year vision is accomplished one year at a time. God's big vision for our lives together and God's big vision for your life will happen one year at a time. So we want to step in 2023 into the fullness of what God has for us. And we're going to do that with five initiatives. Now, when you walked in today at all of our physical campuses, you received a little program and inside these five initiatives are highlighted. And here's what I want to ask you to do. I want to ask you as we go through these five initiatives, God's going to put one of them on your heart. And I want to encourage you just to star, whatever that initiative is. Uh, our going into God's vision for our lives is a matter of praying. It's a matter of 
giving financially and it's a matter of going. And one of these five, God is going to stir within all of us to uniquely invest in that with our time and our energy. So pay attention to God's work in you as we travel through these five initiatives together. Now, the first one that I'm going to highlight is the expansion of God's kingdom. Now, that, that might sound like a really big vision or big idea or maybe even generically. So I want to break down how we're going to aggressively expand God's kingdom in 2023. We're going to do this by investing in our campuses, planting churches, and expanding our international reach. I love this verse from Isaiah 54, 2 and 3. Uh, these are some verses that we have been talking about with our team here and our staff. And these verses say this, Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. For you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dispose nations and settle in their desolate cities. Now, these two verses are talking about God's kingdom. God is speaking to his people and he's saying, I want my tent to be big. I want to reach as many people as possible with my love. So make the tent bigger. And in addition to that, the way that you're going to make the tent bigger is by strengthening the stakes. So I want to encourage you that God is saying to us, there's a strengthening process and a lengthening process that he wants to take us to in order to step into the fullness of his kingdom. So we're going to do this locally, nationally, and globally. Now, locally here in Southern California, we're going to do this by building out our brand new Irvine South Regional Campus. God has miraculously provided a building for our church in Irvine. This is going to be one of the first regional campuses outside of our Lake Forest here in the United States of America where we own a building. And this building is beautiful. Not only is it a beautiful building physically, but it is located strategically in Irvine. Uh, there are some incredible statistics. The, the building, uh, around this building, there are 600,000 people within a short driving distance. Uh, the average median age is 34 years old. So there's a young pop population. It's a diverse community, which allows us to continue with the vision of being an all nation congregation. And there are close to 30,000 students at UC Irvine, just a few miles down the road. Now, here's why all of this is so important for us as a church, because as the Irvine campus is strengthened and the reach of that campus is lengthened, this is going to be a strong regional hub for us in our Southern California network of campuses that is going to allow us to reach many more thousands of people with the love of Jesus. But as our campuses grow in strength, it will give us the ability to start more campuses, to reach more people. So we need this campus to win. Now, this project of them moving into this brand new building that God's provided, and you can see some of the pictures and sketches here of what this will look like. Uh, as they step into this project, this could be a project that takes a year, or this could be a project that takes three or four years. And this is back to that idea of accelerating God's vision for our church, that our obedience and our generosity in this moment can allow us to step into that vision that he has for us. We want to be praying for the Irvine campus. And our generosity with this offering is actually going to make a difference for them to go further, faster into this new building that God has provided for our church. Now, I want you to see these circles because they're so important for us when it comes to the vision of our church. I want to start with our Lake Forest campus. Around our Lake Forest campus, within a 20-minute drive, there are 664,000 people. Now, when you think about that, that's a lot of people. And sometimes if you're on our Lake Forest campus, I, our eyes can get really focused on that and, and forget how many other campuses there are beyond Lake Forest. There are 14 campuses here in the United States of America. And around those campuses alone, a 20-minute radius, there are 9 million people. So 9.3 million people around our stateside campuses. So that helps us understand that over 10 times the, po the population and ability to reach people who are far from God outside of Lake Forest. Now, when you take our international campuses and you put the four international campuses there 
In addition to that, there are 15 million people within driving distance. So when we, re- when we look at scriptures that say, strengthen the church, strengthen the stakes, this is important because the stronger our campuses are, the more able we are to reach the world with the love of Jesus. I wanna encourage you, the strengthening of our campuses is one of our top priorities in 2023. We see you, those of you who are not at our Lake Forest campus, we see you and your fruitfulness, your, your strength is vital to the future vision of our church. Now, nationally, in addition to our campuses getting stronger, and I understand when I say nationally that we have international campuses, so I'm speaking from our Lake Forest and Southern California campuses, we're going to step into a new vision or a new strategy for us as a church to begin to plant churches outside of our local campuses or our local regions. And we're gonna do this by resourcing and investing in church plants. We actually have already assessed nine church planters in strategic cities in North America, some of the most unreached cities in all of North America. And these include cities like Phoenix and Baltimore, Washington DC, West Palm Beach, New York, Michigan. And these cities spread across North America are places where there are literally millions of people that are disconnected from God. So our investment, our praying, our giving, our going, when we stand with these churches, we're gonna be able to make an even greater impact. So many of these church planters and their teams will come to Saddleback, will have the privilege of praying over them and investing in them. And then you're gonna hear in the coming months for us as a church how we're gonna send teams of people to these church plants Uh, over the next year to encourage them and to serve alongside of them. And I'll just say personally, Stacy and I, as we planted a church in the San Francisco Bay Area, we had 17 churches that partnered with us. And some of my greatest memories were when people would come from other churches, they would pray over our family, they would serve alongside of us. And I am confident to this day, when we transitioned Echo Church in the Bay Area, and we were reaching thousands of people, that would have never been possible without churches that would stand with us, that would pray, give, and come on mission trips to encourage us. So we have a unique opportunity. Planting new churches is one of the greatest strategies for evangelism to change the world. We believe this globally, and it's also true in North America. We are losing the battle in so many major metropolitan areas where major cities in North America are not known for the local church. They're not known for movements of the message of Jesus. But when we invest in strategic leaders who are positioned in these cities, there is limitless capacity. We've always been a church that has ministered church to church. It's been in our DNA from the beginning, from the beginning with purpose-driven church and our conferences. So now we have an opportunity in 2023 to take this even a step further by directly investing in strategic churches. And you and I have the opportunity to make a massive difference here nationally through expanding God's kingdom with church planting. Now, globally, I wanna highlight that we're gonna expand God's kingdom by expanding the capacity and reach of our international campuses. And this means with our Buenos Aires campus, one of the things that God has already provided is a larger facility that is going to almost double their capacity, allowing them to to reach twice as many people with the same number of services. And you can see some of the pictures. God has provided this building. Over the next year, renovation is gonna start to take place. And our sacrificial giving and our prayers have the ability to make this project go so much further faster. I've loved hearing stories of what God is doing in Buenos Aires. even having the privilege of meeting their team and jumping on a Zoom call with so many of their strategic leaders, God is doing something special in that place. And we wanna come alongside of our Buenos Aires campus and see God's work come to fruition there. Also in Santa Rosa, at our Santa Rosa campus, God has provided a facility there. And that facility is going to almost double the capacity of that campus. And it's not just about buildings, it's about the lives that will be radically transformed as this campus moves into this new building. Uh, Many of you have heard stories of what God is doing 
there at our Santa Rosa campus in the Philippines. And I've loved hearing stories of what God is doing. Uh, recently, there were 35 people that got baptized in a prison in the Philippines as a part of that campus. They're doing ministry locally and lives are being radically changed through Pastor Mike and his leadership there. And we're believing that God has great things in store for this campus. Now, this is a part of this bigger vision that God is giving to us as a church to have a thriving local church in 15 international cities. And as these campuses are strengthened, they're sending people to other places. Now, our Hong Kong campus, which is growing and seeing lives changed, is mobilizing people. They've sent people to Vancouver and to Manchester, UK, and these locations now that are extension sites, one of them has close to 70 people meeting, another has over 30 people meeting in Manchester, UK, and these extension sites are forming the foundation for us as a church, where eventually these extension sites have the potential of becoming future international campuses for us as a church. So as we pray and as we give and as we go to these places, we're strengthening the global work of Saddleback Church and providing the foundation uh, for the further accomplishment of the Great Commission. And it just gets me so excited to think about these extensions and these campuses and how we have the opportunity to step into supporting what God is already doing through Saddleback Church. Now, I've only gone through one of five of the projects. And I feel like this, this is enough right here for us to just celebrate the faithfulness of God to Saddleback Church. He is moving in such powerful ways. So in 2023, we're gonna expand God's kingdom with bold faith. Now, the second in initiative is that we're gonna innovate with digital spiritual growth. And there's a lot that could be said about this. But part of how the Accelerate initiative or offering is strengthening our work with discipleship is we are working so hard to put tools in people's hands to help them grow spiritually. Now, I want you to do something later today. Don't do it right now while I'm speaking, but if you go on your phone, in particular on an iPhone, you can click on your battery life and you can look back how much time you've spent on your phone over the last week. It's kind of sobering sometimes where you like pull your phone out and you're like, oh my goodness, I spent five hours on my phone today. Now we can fight that. It's, it's good for us to have good tech habits. But when we think about the expansion of God's kingdom and we think about the growth of our people, if people are already spending so much of their lives on their phones, what if we replace so much of the distracting content or maybe divisive or destructive content on people's phones with with resources and tools that can help them grow spiritually. So our team here has been working hard, staff and volunteers, to create tools with technology that have the potential to impact millions of lives. So we're creating tools that will integrate with our Saddleback app that allow people to go on journeys spiritually, where we could have a 21 days uh, prayer emphasis, which we'll do next year. And we can say, hey, we've designed a journey integrated with our Saddleback app that you can go on a 21-day journey, similar to like a Noom app, where that Noom app will give you content and questions and things that you can unpack in your, your small group together, or perhaps even around a dinner table with your family or your roommate. That this little tool where people live, where they, where they do their life, that tool can help them grow spiritually. Now, these tools have the potential to literally revolutionize the way that people grow spiritually. I mean, if, if we can do it with, with products that help people lose weight or products that help people save money, why can't we do it with spiritual growth? So we want to enter into that scene. Again, this is who we are as a church. I know Pastor Rick says that Saddleback was one of the first churches on the internet. Saddleback was one of the first churches to send information digitally with a fax machine. So we wanna stay on the cutting edge of what God is doing globally through technology and be in the places where people live. We're doing this through our journeys effort, integrating into our app. And you're gonna hear more about this in 2023. But our prayers, our serving, our giving is helping, helping to strengthen and further that work with, the, with our effort digitally. Now there's a lot more I could say 
uh, from our podcasts that are reaching millions of people, the, the Doable Discipleship podcast, which is uh, close to 2 million views on YouTube. And so many of our efforts, we're just going to strengthen those next year to help our people grow more spiritually. Now, that's the second initiative. The, second, the third one is the development of future leaders. And what we're going to do here is we're going to more proactively lay the groundwork for our leadership college coming out of Saddleback Church. And Jesus said one time, I want you to hear his words in Matthew 9. It says, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who's in charge of the harvest that he would send more workers into his fields. The limiting factor in the kingdom of God has always been enough workers. So we wanna get more proactive in 2023 with our development of future leaders and laying the groundwork so that in the coming years we can launch our leadership college. And so many of you have expressed interest of th this dream that one day we're gonna be sending out hundreds and hundreds of leaders from our church to other churches every year. One day there's gonna be a plethora of new staff members and leaders that are coming up from the ranks here at Saddleback that are being trained around the purposes and equipped. And next year, we're gonna start with that. Here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna give more energy to our investment in our internship program. Now, in previous years before COVID, we had like 80 people going through our internship program. Recently after COVID, it's been about 30 to 50. We're gonna double that next year. And we're gonna pray that God would help us have over a hundred people that come through, get trained and raised up. And the reason this is so important is that right at one out of eight of every staff member here at Saddleback Church is a former intern. So it's a massive pipeline to develop new leaders and to mobilize people into businesses and organizations who are trained and equipped with the good news of Jesus. And so we're gonna strengthen what we do with internships, we're gonna lay the groundwork for our future college. And then we're also gonna get really intentional about investing in younger leaders. We're gonna launch a project called the Timothy Initiative around training young leaders who are 30 and under with skills and talents and mobilizing them into the kingdom of God. And as we strengthen this effort, it's gonna put the foundation in place for us to be ready to launch that leadership college in coming years. I know so many of you are excited about this third initiative. Now, as we're going through, I wanna remind you to highlight what is it that God is saying to you? Where does he want you to invest your life? And I'm gonna ask you to, to pray. I'm gonna ask you to give. I'm gonna ask you to go. And God's gonna stir one of these as a main focus for your life in 2023. Now, the fourth initiative is the extension of our peace relief efforts. And as I've gotten here over the last few months, I've gotten to know more of what God's done here. Uh, one of the things that gets me most excited is the heart of Saddleback Church to serve beyond the walls of our physical buildings. Now, the peace relief efforts took a massive step forward during COVID. Uh, we looked as a church and so many of you said, you know, we see every crisis as an opportunity to step forward in faith. And so many of you served. In fact, this last year, uh, there were 2,500 people alone that served through our peace efforts here locally in Southern California in our different distribution places and our pop-up sites uh, that you served in these peace efforts. Now, peace is so much more than distribution of groceries, but one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to strengthen our efforts with grocery distribution in 2023. Now, here's why this is so vital for us as a church right now in this season. Uh, as we look globally, inflation is again on the rise. In fact, there are many places globally, in particular in Southern California, where inflation is almost 10% year over year. Now, this, this is a, a big issue. See, when COVID hit, so many people had massive needs and we stepped into that and we saw a little bit of that trail off over the last six months or so, but we're starting to see an uptick again because of inflation. So as a church, we wanna step into that 
by serving, by going, by, by resourcing families that are in need locally. Now, some of the incredible things that God has done as we celebrate, over 75,000 people have been served through our distribution pop-up locations just in this year alone. In fact, uh, if you think about the, the 1,200 pop-up locations, every one of those, what we're doing is these locations are popping up all over Southern California and we're serving communities. And these, com these little pop-up locations where we give groceries away, the good news of Jesus is being shared with people when they come through. And we are literally the hands and feet of Jesus here on planet Earth. So imagine, imagine for just a moment if we could double that impact in 2023 to serve twice as many people through our pop-up locations all over Southern California and different places in the world where there is a need. So our investment in our prayers, our giving, our going, have the power to take what God is doing and accelerate that future vision for us to be a church that is bringing peace wherever we go. Now, our bringing peace is not just locally in Southern California. There's a global impact or global uh, investment that God is inviting us into. And so many of you know that right now there are multiple different crises that are happening globally. I mean, there is the inflation crisis, but there's also a crisis that is happening in Eastern Europe with the war between Russia and Ukraine. And as a result of this, there are millions of people that are leaving and fleeing Ukraine. There are 6 million people that have been displaced. There are over 6 million people on top of that that have moved outside of Ukraine. And it's anticipated that as this war continues, there will be millions more. Now, we know that whenever people are in tension or transition or trouble, they're more open to the message of Jesus. We are so grateful to be partnered with Pastor Anatoly in Ukraine, who is serving there. He's investing in churches and church planters, and his work is so vital. And he believes, and our other partners that we're talking to on the ground, they believe that there's going to be an, an, even, an even increased need for us to send mission teams there and to mobilize pastors and church planters. And this is going to require us partnering with them financially, not just praying for them, but to invest and they're saying even right now that it's, it's going to take probably an, an additional million and a half to two million dollars invested in that work for them to be able to make a difference. Now, historically, whenever there is this kind of tension or transition, the message of Jesus shines brightly. And these are the moments where the church exponentially grows historically. In war, in famine, the church thrives. And we want to be the church that steps up to support what God is doing globally there in Eastern Europe. So this is one of the massive components of our peace relief efforts. Again, there's so much more that I could share with you, but these are two major ways in 2023 that we are stepping forward with the vision that God has given to us. Now, last but certainly not least is our impact through the accomplishment of the Great Commission. And in particular, what I mean by this is our partnership with finishing the task. And the goal with finishing the task is when we look at the global landscape of the Great Commission, God gave his people a mission. This mission is worth sacrificing our life for. That mission is to see people from every nation, tribe, and tongue know the love of Jesus. And God wants us to keep going. God wants us to keep serving, keep praying until that mission becomes a reality. Our prayer as a church and in partnership with Pastor Rick Warren and finishing the task is that by 2033, the Great Commission will be accomplished. Now, right now, there are currently 234 unreached people groups in the world. These are people that don't know the name of Jesus. There's not a thriving movement of the message of Jesus in these locations. There are currently 3.3 billion people on planet earth who have never heard the name of Jesus. That's over one third of the world's population, never heard the name of Jesus. God wants us, those of us who are his followers, to be on the mission to, to get his good news to every nation, tribe, and tongue. So the vision of finishing the task is that there would be a Bible, a believer, a body in every nation, every tribe and tongue by 2033. And we're going to partner together with finishing the task to see that happen. We're gonna do everything that we can as a church 
to come alongside unreached people groups. Some of the people groups that we have partnered together to try to reach are deaf people groups. There are 28 deaf people groups who are currently unreached. And if you've been around for a while, you know that here at Saddleback, we've stepped into that zone to try to reach these people groups. There are still 595,000 deaf people who have never been able to, to hear or see the message of Jesus signed to them in a way that they can understand and receive. So we're going to step forward with faith into the Great Commission, believing that God has great things in store. Now, part of the vision of the Finishing the Task initiative is to see the global body of Jesus awakened around the Great Commission. And this is only going to happen as we br have breakthrough prayers around the Great Commission that we pray boldly that God would use our lives. I, I, I want you to imagine a day where the local church is mobilized globally around the Great Commission. So many churches globally are so insular and so focused on themselves. And as we partner with Finishing the Task and we model the way Saddleback Church, we have the opportunity to awaken the global church around the Great Commission. Imagine if we could see the Great Commission accomplished in our generation. Our investment in the kingdom of God can accelerate the accomplishment of this vision to see every nation, tribe, and tongue reach with the message of Jesus. Now, when I hear these five projects or five initiatives, I get really excited. I get excited personally because I want my life to count for the kingdom of God. I want to invest in that which is eternal. And when I stand before God and give an account for my life, I want to hear those words well done, good and faithful servant. I want to hear God's applause for the investment of my life. And I know that's what you want as well. Hebrews chapter 11 says, faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It's the evidence of things that we cannot yet see. And I want you just to imagine with me for a moment. Faith is our trusting in God for what is ahead. And there's evidence that God brings into our minds through our imagination. When God helps us see that so much of what we're doing here today, we are seeing into the future. I want you to imagine a day where we are mobilizing hundreds of young leaders to help start churches and serve in churches all across the world and sending out people globally from our leadership college. I want you to imagine these nine church plants across North America and the thousands of people that will flood through the doors of these churches and people that will step across the line of faith in the coming year. I want you to imagine these people groups that are currently without a Bible, without a body of believers. And I want you to imagine that moment when so many of them are handed the first Bible in their own language and the joy that they'll have in that moment. You and I get to participate with the global movement of God here on planet Earth. And there is nothing, there is no cause that is greater than the kingdom of God. There is no institution that is greater than the local church. And when the local church is thriving, there is no limit to what God can do globally. So we want to step forward with bold faith, believing that God has great things in store. See, through people's faith in the days of old, they earned a good reputation. And by faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command, that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. So God is a God that speaks things into existence. Things that do not exist start to exist through God's word and through God using his people to accomplish his, his work here on planet earth. So when we look back in 2023, a year from now, we're going to have stories of lives that Jesus has changed through us together. And my encouragement to you is to be like the people of Israel that believed God for the promise that he had for them. Numbers 14, I'll wrap up on this verse. Uh, God is speaking and he says, not one of those who saw my glory and signs I performed in Egypt in the wilderness and disobeyed me and tested me 10 times. Not one of them will see the land I promised on oath to their ancestors. No one who has treated me with contempt will ever see it. But listen to this. My servant Caleb has a different spirit and he follows me wholeheartedly. I will bring him into the land he went to and his descendants will inherit it. 
Caleb was different from the rest of Israel. He believed God for the promise that God had for his people, and he followed with his whole heart. God is looking for a people here at Saddleback Church that will believe him and obediently step forward with what he's asking us to do in 2023. And right now is a moment. So between now and the end of the year, we're going to give sacrificially. We're going to give above and beyond our regular giving towards these initiatives to see the work of God accomplished through our lives together. And I want to invite you to prayerfully consider how God would have you be involved. I want to invite you to ask God to give you a number. And for some people, a sacrificial gift would be 10,000, 100,000. Some people, a sacrificial gift would be $100. But God will lead you in that. I know that the Holy Spirit has a number in mind. And my goal is not an amount of money for you or even for our church. Our prayer goal is 100% participation, that you would engage in what God is asking us to do through praying, through giving, and through going. So as we pray now, between now and the end of the year, God is going to lead us and he's going to provide miraculously for these initiatives that he wants to use us to accomplish. Will you pray? Will you give? Will you go? God wants to use you. He's got a vision for your life. And as we wrap up our time together, I want you to look back through that list of five. I want you to think back, what's the one that God is stirring in your heart on? And one of those, over the coming months, God's going to invite you to go or to serve in that area. In fact, today, when we respond during our time of, uh, with our connection cards, I want you to write down, what is that initiative that God is inviting you into. And as you consider this, I want to tell you one story. So when Stacy and I were leaving the San Francisco Bay Area, uh, our last weekend there, we stood in a lobby and we hugged people. We prayed together for four hours. Just people, person after person came up to us. And there were so many stories of lives that they would say, I, my life was changed forever. I made a decision to follow Jesus here. I gave my life to God wholeheartedly. I went on a mission trip because of this church. I got baptized here. Just story after story after story after story. And when I reflect on those 14 years in the Bay Area, the thing I remember is the individual lives that Jesus changed. In fact, I remember one life in particular, one couple, a couple by the name of Tim and Melissa. And just recently, Tim and Melissa came here to Saddleback to visit, and I got to catch up with them. Melissa grew up in a Buddhist family, disconnected from God. Uh, her family didn't understand the message of Jesus, but she had one friend that attended the church where Stacy and I were pastoring. That one friend caught a vision for God to use her life to expand the kingdom of God. There was one weekend where we invited people to walk up and write names down behind a curtain on a wall and pray for somebody in their life that God would use them to reach that person with his good news. This one young girl walked up and wrote down Melissa's name. She was praying specifically for Melissa to encounter the love of Jesus. And in the coming months, she would invite Melissa to church. Melissa would hear the good news of Jesus. She would respond and she would go all in. She'd start serving, she'd come on staff, and then eventually she would be sent out to be a part of a brand new church plant in Las Vegas. And now she and her husband, who she met at Echo Church, are now living their lives fully engaged in the kingdom of God. Now, why do I tell you this story? Because I remember a moment when we were moving into that first building where Stacy and I were processing how God would want us to be involved financially. And God was leading us, led us as a family, basically to empty out our savings account to get our church into that building. And, you know, at the end of our time there, I don't even remember that money. I don't even remember the amount of money that it was. All I remember is there was a sacrifice that God asked us to make. We said yes. And then there were thousands of lives that he changed. The sacrifice now is so small in the rear view mirror when I compare it to all these lives that God changed. And I want to encourage you that from season to season, God will lead you to sacrifice for future vision. He will prompt you to obey for what he has in the future what he wants to do through you. And your obedience in those moments are of utmost significance to your formation and to your impact with your life. So I wanna encourage you to really begin to pray, where is God leading you to be bold? Where is God leading you to step forward? Where is God leading you to sacrifice? And as he does, say yes to him. 
Don't delay obedience because there's always a cost to our disobedience. Moments of disobedience in our journey spiritually will lead to decades of delayed destiny. But one moment of surrender can make all the difference. One moment of obedience can change everything for your life and the lives of those around you. So now as we move into this season, at the end of 2022, let's be bold in our faith and let's say yes to Jesus. Let's pray together. Father, thank you today that you are a God that has a great vision for our lives. You have a great vision for what you want to do in the coming year. And in this season, when we look back at your faithfulness and we look ahead to what you have for us, I pray more than anything else that you would help us be obedient to you and say yes to your prompting. God, we love you. We're so grateful for your kindness, for what you've accomplished in our lives, and that you are the kind of God that changed us so that we can be your change agents here on planet earth. We don't want to be like the Israelites when it said that they went on a journey and it took 40 years. It could have been 11 days. We want to go on a journey where we look back a year from now and say that we stepped into the fullness to accelerate the vision that you had for our lives individually and collectively. And we will give you glory when you do these things. We pray all this in Jesus name. Amen. Wow. What a powerful vision from Pastor Andy. What a powerful um, time to come together and ask ourselves, hey God, what does you want us to do? What does you want us to be? What do, uh, do you want our church to be for the community that we're living in? And I mentioned to you before uh, the message today that this message, these five key initiatives will have an effect on Berlin as well. So let me dive into that. Of course, when he talks about digital spiritual growth apps, we will benefit from that because we can use these apps as well to boost our spiritual health, to boost our spiritual growth, and to help people to grow in their spiritual faith that are new at Sederbeck, that are new uh, as Christians, as followers of Christ. When Pastor Andy talked about um, new efforts or increasing our efforts in peace relief, this is something that's on our heart here in Berlin as well. We started outreach, neighborhood outreaches every month. We want to build up peace programs, local peace programs, uh, ministries that will help people in our city. Now, what does that mean? I don't know. There are so many people in need in Berlin and I know that we cannot serve everyone. But this is, um, um, I believe that all churches in Berlin are called to serve the people in need in our city. And we have to find out which people group and in which area God calls us to serve the people in Berlin and the people in our neighborhood. That could be homeless people. That could be people um, uh, like single parents, for example. That could be people who are coming here as expats and they have a hard time to get connected. And there are so many other people groups. So we will start new local peace ministries here in Berlin. And this is something that we have in common with all of the other, um, all of the other campuses of our church. And then Pastor Andy talked about the campuses and, and um, Irvine South and um, Santa Rosa and Buenos Aires and how they built new buildings to facilitate these campuses and how they increase the capacity of these campuses. And now he did not include Berlin in that, but let me share a vision with you. We are actively looking for a new home for our church. And when I say home, I don't mean a venue. I mean really a home, something that, we, that is our place that we can brand as Sellerback Berlin um, a place where we are seen and not hidden somewhere. A place that is a blessing to the neighborhood that, uh, that we're in. Now, I don't know if we will find that place next year or in two years or in three years or in five years. But I know that God will open that door. But maybe God will have another step, another venue that uh, will be a blessing to our church in the next year. And so... We want to open our eyes 
and we want to prayerfully seek God's guidance and wisdom to find this new home for our church. And there are so many other things that we have in store for Söderberg Berlin that is part of our Berlin vision that we're still working on. And this is something that we will share with you next year. At the beginning of next year, we will share our Berlin vision with you. Where does God want us to go? What does God want us to do for the city of Berlin and for you? So this is just a glimpse of um, what our vision is for Berlin. And I wanted to share that with you because you might feel, okay, well, what does this have to do with Berlin? Just a quick reminder, at Sederbeck, we're one church in many locations. Irvine South, these are our brothers and sisters. This is not just a different church over there in the US. These are brothers and sisters in the same church as we are. Our friends in, in Buenos Aires and in Santa Rosa, we pray for them and we are excited for their new uh, possibilities and opportunities um, that they get to further God's kingdom in the next year. And as I mentioned, we do the same thing over here. And so maybe next year for the Accelerate offering, Pastor Andy will include Berlin in his message. As I mentioned uh, to you earlier, that our Christmas series, The Missing Piece, is starting next week. Next week on Advent 3rd, we have another message on Advent 4th, and we have the fourth, uh, the third uh, part three on Christmas Eve. And I want to show you a little trailer for that teaching series so that you know what this is all about. Desperate. Our world is desperate right now. It's clear something is missing this Christmas. Just look around. Look what's happening. Chaos and confusion are taking over. What is going on here? What am I missing? Where is the missing piece? Why can't I find peace? We need peace. That goes beyond understanding. Peace we cannot give ourselves. Peace that changed the world. Peace that saves. We need the Prince of Peace. This Christmas, find your missing piece. Wow. What a beautiful teaching series. The Missing Piece. Aren't we all looking for peace in our relationships, in our hearts, in our minds, in our world right now? So I want to invite you. I want to invite you to be there next Sunday for our in-person worship service to experience part one of this sermon series, The Missing Peace, and to find out how God restores peace in every area of our lives. And I want to also invite you to invite other people to join. I know that you know people in your life that need peace, that are looking for peace in their relationships, in their career, in their hearts. So invite them. We have some invitation cards um, at our in-person services, or you can simply forward this message to them and let them know about Saddleback and let them know about what Saddleback has to offer this Christmas. As I mentioned uh, um, earlier, we will have a worship service on Edwin Third and on Edwin Fourth on both of these Sundays. And then we will have a Christmas Eve service. That's a Saturday, but Christmas Eve is the most important church day, I would say. I grew up in a non-Christian family and even we went to church on Christmas Eve. So Christmas Eve at 3 p.m., perfect time to be at church to listen to the word of God, to worship God, and then to go home, have dinner, and unwrap the presents. This is usually how it works in Germany. And so I want to invite you to that as well. And I want to ask you to invite your friends and family to come to our Christmas Eve service at December 24th at 3 p.m. And now um, we want to enjoy one more worship song, one more Christmas song, 
and I want to ask you to join us in worshiping. Sing out loud and praise God.